Learning in progress. Welcome to Child Growth and Development, Assignment 1. The textbook for this course can be bought as an e-textbook. Instructors um, encourage students to get e-textbooks because they're more affordable and they arrive to your email very quickly so that you don't waste any time to begin the course. This course is a particularly important course in your understanding of child growth and development. There's a vast amount of information in this course. So in this course, please do not spend your time memorizing or making vast amounts of notes. Instead, when you learn about a theory, when you learn information, make connections, and especially use your background knowledge and your life experiences to understand each theory at a, a deeper level. So let's, um, let's go on to the uh, second slide. So what is lifespan uh, development? Children go through different stages of development. Some child development experts have called the various stages of development different names over decades of research. Some well-known child development theories, theorists evolve from the work of Piaget, Bowlby, Fru, Freud, Neufeld, and Mate. By studying children, we can learn more about why they develop the way they do and the most effective ways to help them to develop as responsible citizens with positive contributions to make. With our knowledge of children's development, we can also understand why some children have difficulties and delays and how to help them overcome challenges and what we need to do. Many people now call difficulties and challenges stretches. So by studying children, we can understand environmental factors that influence how a child grows biologically, cognitively, socially, and emotionally. For example, parental attitude to education can have an influence on a child's educational performance. As you begin this course, remember to make connections to how this learning can help you in a preschool or childcare setting. Understanding growth and development and using this information to inform your daily duties will ensure that the child and children in your care do well. Once you have studied development, you will know what is typical at certain ages and stages. Perhaps most importantly, studying human development makes it easier to spot possible signs of, of stretches, of triggers, of, of uh, challenges for a learner, uh, for a child. From problems with biological, cognitive, social, and emotional uh, development in early childhood to struggles later in life, being able to identify possible stretches is important. So let's get started. Okay, so each developmental area influences the other in many ways. Remember that children do not develop in stages as traditionally defined, especially children with developmental delays. That is, their behavior changes gradually, not abruptly. They develop at different rates in different domains rather than showing synchronous change across domains. And three, different children develop in different ways. Children with special needs, children from disadvantaged backgrounds, and children from dysfunctional circumstances do not necessarily follow the traditionally defined development. So in terms of periods of development, most theorists call uh, prenatal conception to birth, infancy from birth to 18 to 24 months, early childhood from three to five years, middle and late childhood from six to 11 years, adolescence from 10 to 12 to 18 to 12, 21 years old, uh, early adolescence from 20 to 30 years old, middle adulthood, 40 to 50 years old, and late adulthood. Uh, let's go on to the next slide. So on slide three, you will see um, the three areas of lifespan development. Other theorists have, 
have created other uh, domains as well. But in this course, we're going to focus on mainly three. So lifespan development refers to the full process of human development from conception to death. It is a holistic approach to understand all the biological, cognitive, emotional, and social changes that people go through. So biological development, biological processes. These include the topics of genetics, body growth, hormonal changes, and the impacts of physical deformities, diseases, and illness. Genetics decides which traits are inherited from which biological parent from birth to two years marks the stage of most significant motor change. Adolescence and middle adulthood are the periods of most significant hormonal change. Some physical deformities and diseases that impact development are inherited genetically. Others result from lifestyle and environment, and others arise from a genetic predisposition tr triggered by environmental factors. Cognitive development. Cognitive changes occur over the lifespan. Cognitive development involves changes and achieving milestones in areas in the areas of language, memory, and intelligence. The most prominent period of cognitive growth is from birth to late childhood, and most of these changes are solidified by early adulthood and begin to deteriorate in late adulthood. Social and emotional development. Social development refers to changes humans go through and experience they have in relationship to others. First, social interactions are primarily with family and every family is distinctly influenced by culture and demographics. As people grow, their social influences expand to include friends and communities. Social interactions are influenced at every stage by authority figures and technological evolution. Social media has a significant impact on social development, especially during adolescence. Emotional development involves changes in the way people learn to recognize and react to their own emotions and identify and respond to those of others. Mental health disorders usually influence both cognitive and emotional development. Uh, some factors to consider when interacting with, in, with kids, or with children include uh, communicating in ways that are age appropriate, encouraging appropriate play, helping children express and understand emotions, and reinforcing positive behaviors. Once you better understand the stages of development and what makes kids tick, you will feel more comfortable talking, playing, and working with them. Let's move on to the next slide. So child development theories focus on explaining how children change and grow over the course of childhood. These developmental theories center on various aspects of growth, including social, emotional, and cognitive development. The study of human development is a rich and varied subject. We all have personal experiences with development, but it sometimes is difficult to understand how and why people grow, learn, and act as they do. Why do children behave in certain ways? Is their behavior related to their age, family relationships, or individual temperament? Developmental psychologists strive to answer such questions, as well as to understand, explain, and predict behaviors that occur throughout the lifespan. In order to understand human development, a, a number of different theories of child development have arisen to explain various aspects of human growth. The history of developmental theories. Child development that occurs from birth to adulthood was largely ignored throughout much of human history. Children were often viewed simply as, as simply as small versions of adults, and little attention was paid to the many advances in cognitive abilities, language usage, and physical growth that occur during childhood and adolescence. Interest in the field of child development finally began to emerge early in the 20th century, but it tended to focus on abnormal behavior. Eventually, researchers became increasingly interested in other topics, including typical child development, as well as the influences on development. Most re more recent theories outline the developmental stages of children and identify the typical ages at which these growth milestones occur. 
So there are many um, theories. Uh, there are many child developmental theories that have been proposed by theorists and researchers. Some of the major theories of child development are known as Gram theories. They attempt to describe every aspect of development using often using a stage approach. Others are known as mini theories. They instead focus only on a fairly limited uh, aspect of development, such as cognitive or social growth. So we have the sociocultural theory, uh, behavioral child development, attachment theory, cognitive development, psychosexual development, psychosocial development, and social learning theory. And we'll look at each of these theories. So in slide five, uh, let's look at Freud's psychosexual development theory. So psychoanalytic theory originated with the work of Sigmund Freud. Through his clinical work with patients suffering from mental illness, Freud came to believe that childhood experiences and unconscious desires influence behavior. According to Freud, conflicts that occur during each of these stages can have a lifelong influence on personality and behavior. Freud proposed one of the best known grand theories of child development. According to Freud's psychosexual theory, child development occurs in a series of stages focused on different pleasures, pleasure areas of the body. During each stage, the child encounters conflicts that play a significant role in the course of development. So uh, looking at the slide, at slide five, you see oral, anal, phallic, latent, and general. So these are the stages uh, that he proposed. So in the oral stage, uh, the focus is on the mouth, sucking, swallowing. That's where the ego develops. Uh, anal stage is uh, focused on the anus, withholding or expelling the feces. Phallic stage is a focus on the penis or clitoris, masturbation. Latent, little or no sexual motivation present genital, the penis or vagina, and sexual intercourse. And um, this is Freud's psychoanalytic theory. Um, so what happens as children complete each stage and what might result if a child does poorly <clears throat> during a particular point in development? Successfully completing each stage leads to a development of a healthy adult personality. Failing to resolve the conflict, <clears throat> excuse me. Failing to resolve the conflict of a particular stage can result in fixation that can then have an influence on adult behavior. While some other child development theories, theory, theories suggest that personality continues to change, and grow over the entire lifetime, Freud believed that it was early experiences that played the greatest role in shaping development. According to Freud, personality is largely set in stone by the age of five. So let's go on to the next slide, slide six. <clears throat> so this is Erickson's psychosocial developmental theory. Psychoanalytic theory was an enormously influential force during the first half of the 20th century. Those inspired and influenced by Freud went on to expand upon Freud's ideas and develop theories of their own. Of these neo-Freudians, Eric Erikson's ideas have become perhaps the best known. Erikson's eight-stage state theory of psychosocial development describes growth and change throughout life focusing on social interaction and conflicts that arise during different stages of development. While Erickson's theory of psychosocial development shared some similarities with Freud's, it is dramatically different in many ways. Rather than focusing on sexual interest as a driving force in development, Erickson believed that social interaction and experience played decisive roles. 
His eight stage theory of human development described this process from infancy through death. During each stage, people are faced with a developmental conflict that impacts later functioning and growth. Unlike many other developmental theories, Eric Erickson's psychosocial theory focuses on development across the entire lifespan. At each stage, children and adults face a developmental crisis that serves as a major turning point. Successfully managing the challenge of each stage leads to the emergence of a lifelong psychological virtue. So uh, when if you look at the slide, at infancy, uh, the uh, dilemma is between trust versus mistrust. At early childhood, it's between autonomy versus shame and doubt, preschool initiative versus guilt, school age industry versus inferiority, during adolescence, uh, identity versus role confusion, young adulthood, intimacy versus isolation, middle adulthood, generativity versus stagnation, and maturity, ego integrity versus despair. So let's take a look at the next slide. So this includes a number of theories. Uh, let's look first at beh behavioral child development theories. So during the first half of the 20th century, a new school of thought known as behaviorism rose to become a dominant force within psychology. Behaviorists believed that psychology needed to focus only on observable and quantifiable behaviors in order to become a more scientific discipline. According to the behavior perspective, all human behavior can be described in terms of environmental influences. Some behaviorists such as John B. Watson and B.F. Skinner insisted that learning occurs purely through processes of association and reinforcement. So look at the, uh, on the slide seven, uh, you can see classical conditioning, associate, associate and involuntary response, and the stimulus and operant conditioning, associate a voluntary behavior and a consequence. Behavior theories of child development focus on how environmental interactions influence behavior and is based on the theories of John B. Watson, Ivan Pavlov and B.F. Skinner. These theories deal only with observable behaviors. Development is considered a reaction to rewards, punishment, stimuli, and reinforcement. This theory differs considerably from other child development theories because it gives no consideration to internal thought or feelings. Instead, it focuses purely on how experiences shape who we are. Two important types of learning that emerge from this approach is the development are classical conditioning and operant conditioning. Classical conditioning involves learning by pairing a naturally occurring stimulus with a previously neutral stimulus. Operant conditioning utilizes reinforcement and punishment to modify behaviors. Thinking out, <clears throat> another theory is Piaget's cognitive developmental theory. So this is uh, the red, Piaget's stages of cognitive development. So Piaget's, uh, the cognitive theory is concerned with the development of a person's thought processes. It also looks at how these thought processes influence how we understand and interact with the world. There is Jean Piaget proposed one of the most influential theories of cognitive development. Piaget proposed an idea that seems obvious now, but helped revolutionize how we think about child development. Children think differently than adults. His cognitive theory seeks to describe and explain the development of, of thought processes and mental states. It also looks at how these thought processes influence the way we understand inter and interact with the world. Piaget then proposed a theory of cognitive development to account for the steps and sequence of children's intelligent intellectual development. So the sensory motor stage uh, is a period of time between birth and age of two, during which an infant's knowledge of the world is limited to his or her sensory perceptions and motor activities. Behaviors are limited to simple motor responses caused by sensory stimuli. The pre-operational stage, a period between age two and seven, 
during which a child learns to use language. During this stage, children do not yet understand concrete logic, cannot mentally manipulate information, and are unable to take the point of view of other, per other people. The next stage is concrete operational stage, usually from between age seven and 11, during which children gain a better understanding of mental operation. Children begin thinking logically about concrete events, but have difficulty understanding abstract or hypothetical concepts. The last stage is the formal operational stage, a period between age 12 to adulthood, when people develop the ability to think about abstract concepts. Skills such as logical thought, deductive reasoning, and systematic planning also emerge during this stage. Bowlby's attachment theory um, is listed in green on the slide. There is a great deal of research on the social development of children. John Bowley proposed one of the earliest theories of social development. Bowley uh, believed that early relationships with caregivers play a, play a major role in child development and continue to influence social relationships throughout lifespan. Bowley's attachment theory suggests that children are born with an innate need to form attachments. Such attachment aid, aid in survival by ensuring that the child receives care and protection. Not only that, but these attachments are characterized by clear behavioral and motivational practices and patterns. In other words, both children and caregivers engage in behaviors designed to ensure proximity. Children strive to stay close and connected to their caregivers, who in turn provide a safe haven and a secure base for exploration. Researchers have also expanded upon Bowlby's sorry, original work and have suggested that a number of different attachment styles exist. Children who receive consistent support and care are more likely to develop a, a secure attachment style, while those who receive less reliable care may develop an ambient, avoidant, and disorganized style. Another theory is Bandura's social learning theory. It's in beige on slide seven. So social learning theory is based on the work of psychologist Albert Bandura. Bandura believed that the conditioning and reinforcement process could not sufficiently explain all of human learning. For example, how can the conditioning process account for learned behaviors that have not been reinforced through classical conditioning or operant conditioning? According to social learning theory, behaviors can also be learned through observation and modeling. By observing the action of others, including parents and peers, children develop new skills and acquire new information. Bandura's child development theory suggests that observation plays a critical role in learning, but this observation does not necessarily need to take the form of watching a live model. Instead, people can also learn by listening to verbal instructions about how to perform a behavior, as well as through observing either real or fictional characters displaying behavior in books or films. So um, the social learning theory, one, uh, a main point is that people can learn through observation. Two, mental states are important to learning. And three, learning does not necessarily lead to behavior change. So let's go on to the last slide, slide eight. And this is Vygotsky's sociocultural theory. Another psychologist named Lev Vygotsky proposed a seminal learning theory that has gone on to become very influential, especially in the field of education. Like Piaget, Vygotsky believed that children learn actively and through hands-on experiences. His sociocultural theory also suggested that parents, caregivers, peers, and the culture at large were responsible for developing higher order functions. In Vygotsky's view, learning is an inherently social process. Through interacting with others, learning becomes integrated into an individual's understanding of the world. The, this child development theory also introduced the concept of the zone of proximal development, which is the gap between what a person can do with help 
and what they can do on their own. It is with the help of more knowledgeable others that people with that people are able to progressively learn and increase their skills and scope of understanding. If you look at the at the slide, uh, there are three different areas. If you look at the bottom right hand side, you will see the zone of proximal de development, ZPD and scaffolding. So in the center, you'll see um, what I can learn on my own and are surrounded around it is what I can learn with help. And then beyond that is beyond my reach. So knowledgeable others, whether it's teachers or parents or other adults in their life or either other children can, can support the child and help them. And technology, they can use technology and tools and they can use a wide variety of techniques. Uh, if you look on your left-hand side, the chart lists a variety of scaffolding uh, tools and supports and strategies. Um, all of which you can't use in a preschool or daycare, but you can definitely use a variety of them. So, if, for example, in the verbal scaffolding area, you can uh, teach familiar chunks to children, such as, may I go to the washroom or restroom? Excuse me. In procedural scaffolding, you can um, use uh, routines to help uh, children learn. And in instructional scaffolding, you can use uh, labels and visuals and you can pull schedules, whether through picture or in words. So uh, the other uh, box on the right hand side top is uh, shows you the zone of proximal development. So if learning is too easy, it's, it's, um, it's not good because then kids get bored. But if learning is too hard, then anxiety starts and, and uh, children realize failure. So what can you do? Slowly, slowly scaffold them. It's like stairs. So learning happens with guided assistance, scaffolding. So you go up and then you have independent learning, which uh, becomes automatic. So the child development theory also, like I mentioned, introduced the concept of the zone of proximal development. As you can see, some of psychology's best known thinkers have developed theories to help explore and explain different aspects of child development. While not all these theories are fully accepted today, they all have had an important influence on our understanding of child development. Today, contemporary psychologists often draw on a variety of theories and perspectives in order to understand how kids grow, behave, and think. These theories represent just a few of the different ways of thinking about child development. In reality, fully understanding how children change and grow over the course of childhood or requires looking at many different factors that influence physical and psychological growth. Genes, the environment and the interaction between these two forces determine how kids grow physically as well as mentally. So this concludes your lecture for assignment one, wishing you all the best as you begin your uh, course and your assignment. Happy learning and please don't feel free to reach out if you have any questions.